Kotlin Multiplatform now has UUID support built in with brand new experimental APIs for them right in the standard library. This has been a highly requested feature and having a standard implementation for everyone to use means that you won't have to implement it yourself or add extra dependencies to your projects. You'll also be able to reuse the same UUID type across the entire ecosystem with both libraries and your own project code building on this API. Before we get to the code, let's talk a bit about what you might use a UUID for. Universally unique identifiers are 128-bit numbers which are often used as database or session IDs. The great thing about them is that they can be generated independently anywhere with an extremely low chance of generating the same ID twice. This means you can create these IDs and assign them to things on the client side on many different devices without having to constantly synchronize with a server that will tell you what the next ID should be. To get started with UUIDs in a Kotlin multi-platform project, we can call uuid.random, which gives us a version 4 randomized UUID. This function is backed by different random number generators across the various platforms, which are all described in detail in the documentation. As these new APIs are experimental for now, we'll have to opt into using them. We can print this UUID directly, which we'll call toString on it, and display it in a standard hexadecimal format where each of the 32 digits represents four bits of data. These digits are also separated into groups using dashes. As you can see, I'm writing this code to try UUIDs in the common source set of my project. So I also have a small JVM application set up here to call into that function and actually run the code somewhere. Of course, the really interesting part is being able to use this API on multiple platforms. To see that in action, here's a small Compose multi-platform app running on Android, iOS, desktop, and web, all of which can generate as many UUIDs as you need. What if we have a UUID in the standard dashed format as a string from somewhere? We can use the parse function to take that and create an instance of the class. While parse and toString use the standard format with dashes, you can also use parse hex and to hex string for a shorter representation with no dashes. This shorter format is sometimes used when sending IDs through the network or when saving them to a database just to save a bit of space. While we're at efficiency, you can also convert a UUID to a byte array as well as the other way around if you want to work at the byte level. If you want to work with the individual bits of a UUID, you can call two longs to get access to them as two long values, which represent the most significant bits and the least significant bits of the UUID. This of course works nicely as the UUID is 128 bits and each long value can hold 64 of those. Depending on the version of the UUID, certain bits of it will have specific meaning. Something that all UUIDs must contain though is their version, which is always stored here in the first hex digit of the third group. In this form, we can immediately see that this is a version 4 UUID. But let's see how we could extract this value from our code. First, we'll take the most significant bits. We'll shift them to the right by three hexadecimal digits, which is 12 decimal places when counting it in binary, and then perform a binary AND operation to chop off just one digit. This gives us the version as the result of our lambda, which the toolongs function helpfully returns, so we can print it and confirm that we are indeed working with a version 4 UUID here. As a quick note, if you want to work with unsigned values instead, you can always use the toUlongs function, which gives you the same bits as two unsigned long values. Going the other way, there are APIs that you can use to construct UUIDs from two long or unsigned long values, using the fromLongs and from uLongs functions. Note the 0x prefix here that lets us use hexadecimal digits, as well as the ul suffix, which specifies that our values are unsigned longs. To quickly check the UUID that we've created, we can parse the same values from a string and then compare the two instances, which does indeed return true. Finally, if you're working on the JVM, you can use extensions to convert between the Java and Kotlin UUID types in both directions, making it easy to interop with existing code that uses Java UUIDs or to migrate it step-by-step -step to the new Kotlin type. With that, you can now generate, parse, inspect, and convert UUIDs in your common or platform-specific Kotlin code. To learn more about the available APIs, visit the documentation, and if you have any feedback about these experimental APIs, join the conversation in the related issue in the Keep repository. With that, go and try multi-platform UUIDs in your own projects, and have a nice Kotlin.